Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample 47, and this one is all about recycled carbon fiber. This is a carbon conversions 200 gram recycled material, and it's pretty neat stuff, and this is a look at how you might use it for tooling. The big deal here is that you end up with a laminate that has got a very low fiber volume fraction. So there's a lot more resin than fiber. So here's a look at the layup. There's a piece of Teflon surface ply, and I just pointed out a couple of defects, some chunks that have been taken out of it. This material is great for tooling surfaces where you're going to do some painting afterwards, but it's not a ideal cosmetic surface, but it doesn't transfer and it releases beautifully. Here's that first ply of 200 gram plain weave. And this is the 200 gram REVO MCF. This is a recycled material and it is beautiful stuff. Very uniform. You can kind of stretch it, break it, pull it apart, unlike a non-crimp or woven where the continuous fibers mean you really have to be careful about slip joints and laps and things like that. And for tooling and a lot of other things, when you're really more focused on building up thickness and having a good mechanical performance but not a lot of directionality, this is pretty amazing stuff. And this is really squishy. You can push on it and it really um, has a lot of give to it. And it'll be neat to see how that works out during the infusion. So here's that top 200 gram. I'm using some Coppaflex for infusion here. And this is just a peel ply and flow media together. A little bit of nylon peel ply underneath, kind of patched together. And my hope here is by leaving a large vacuum break there, that even if this feeds very slowly or not uniformly, that there'll be enough room where the resin is just flowing through the non-woven carbon that it'll be able to kind of catch up and you're not gonna overrun the front and, and trap air on the bottom surface. So both of the, the feed and the vacuum side are going to be up in pleats. And this is an AirTech product. It's a spiral wrap with some of that uh, shade clothy type flow media wrapped and stitched around it. And that's a really nice thing for uh, elevated feed lines where you're keeping them up off the part. And that can be nice where you have very little flange um, or you want to have them up in the bag so they don't print onto the part. And I'm cleaning off the perimeter of the aluminum plate just to make sure there aren't any little bits of fiber there that could cause leaks in the bag. And putting the bag over, I'm going to put a pleat um, on either edge where the feed manifold is and also where the vacuum. And you can see I'm doing something here. Um, I've got that vacuum line running underneath the bag. And I'm not going to notice it for a little while, and then I'm going to have to come back and fix it. So sometimes those details will get you. Put that up in a pleat, and here, here I am noticing, and I'm going to decide what to do. Go back and uh, cut it off from the catch pot and pull it through. So it'll happen. I'm going to finish bagging this up, leaving enough pleats uh, to pull those up, on to up uh, well off the surface gonna pull that bag down see how much it squishes comes down very nicely and uniformly no wrinkling in the material you can see I've got a little dial indicator set up there on the bag and uh, mixed up the ProSet infusion resin here this is fast resin so I'm taking a little bit of a risk and hoping this fills quickly but the temperature is is reasonable and that dial indicator is going to show how much the thickness of the material changes as the resin flow front passes. So right now it is being compacted by the full force of the bag and we'll call that zero. And as the resin moves through, the resin is going to fill, it's going to reduce the, the pressure the bag is putting on that surface. And typically it will fluff up a little bit and get thicker. And that's totally fine and normal, but I'm trying to see if this does it a lot, a little, um, and you can see as that flow front passes there, the needle's going to move to the right. That's not a terrible amount. It's probably around 10% of the total thickness, which is very reasonable. And uh, I was just interested to see if it would be more with this material. 
So the infusion complete, cured up nicely, no trapped air. I did dial the vacuum back a little bit in curing this to about half, which is something I almost always do with epoxy infusions. It uh, just reduces the risk, especially with resin that's been around a while, uh, of any moisture volatilizing and, and uh, making a mess in there. You can see that bit on the Teflon surface there, and um, also how nice that Compaflex peels off. It does take quite a bit of resin, though. Um, it's one downside of these uh, nice combination flow media peel ply is that there's a, there's a lot of resin consumed, but it's usually worth it because they're very forgiving. This is a little bit of uh, spray glue. There's the defect from the Teflon and another. Um, the Teflon is great, but it's definitely not something that's going to give you a perfect surface, and it's totally repairable. You can cut things out and patch them together. So here I'm cutting out the square with my one foot template using a carbide scribe. It's a really nice way to mark material that won't get wiped away with solvent or wear off. Here's the trimmed up piece. You can see that nice surface. It came out very uniform and flat, no warping. Here I tried to put some acetone to show just how random those fibers are. It does not show layers like you would typically see with a stack of material. Um, here is through a microscope. I tried to get it, but it, it's hard to see. You do get a sense that it's really a uniform, all directions material. The weight was about 655 grams, 23 and an eighth pounds for that one square foot, and just under six millimeters, or about a little less than a quarter inch. So here's a look at laminate sample 30, which was a similar six millimeter tooling plate made with triax, heavy non-crimp material. And the difference here is this one has got a very high fiber volume fraction of 0.58, whereas the one that did here has got a very low fiber volume fraction, 0.18, which is really, really not that much fiber. It still comes out stiff, and it feels like it would be a really good option for tooling. I'm not sure about CTE, but my guess is that thermal expansion is gonna be consistent with other carbon laminates, even though there is less carbon in there. Price of resin versus carbon makes this a compelling option. I'm really looking forward to trying it out for some larger tooling and, and getting a sense of how it works. But it's a, it's a beautiful material, super conformable, and it really, I think the fact that it's recycled is just a bonus. My understanding is the price per square meter is about half that of a 200 gram woven. And here you build quite a bit more thickness. It's um, something I'm gonna try out some more. So thanks for checking it out, and I'll see you on the next one.